Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and today I want to walk you through our new NPM package support. Now before I get started, I want to say I know a lot of you are not traditional developers. Maybe you've never written a piece of JavaScript or TypeScript in your life. That's okay. Neither have I. You can still take advantage of this feature and utilize the power of the entire TypeScript ecosystem right alongside your Xano function stacks. There is a lot of power and functionality that NPM package support unlocks, and I'm going to walk you through it. So first, let's just talk a little bit about what an NPM package even is. An NPM package is essentially a pre-built library that you can use in JavaScript and TypeScript functions to perform certain tasks. This can be anything from generating random data, such as like UUIDs, to creating images. You can even do things like editing or creating PDFs, uh, image manipulation, advanced math, computations, encryption. If there's something that you want to do and Xano doesn't do it natively, there's probably an NPM package that can do it for you. So to leverage the NPM package support in Xano, you will use Lambda functions. And a Lambda function is just JavaScript or TypeScript right alongside your Xano function stacks. So here is a super quick example that I whipped up. This uses a package called node emoji to take text representations of emoji and it just replaces it with the proper emoji that that represents. So our text here says wave hello and it has an earth emoji here. We have a small function to call that package and run the function to convert this text representation to the proper emoji and then we return the result. So when we run this, this is the response that we're returned. Nice and easy, and it gives you a pretty cool way to utilize something that you wouldn't typically be able to utilize inside of the function stack in this way. Now, I'm going to show you another example, but this time I'm going to start from scratch. We're going to create it live right on the spot. And to do this, I am going to use our Lambda Assistant. Now, the Lambda Assistant, and this is really important, especially for us non-developers out there, the Lambda Assistant allows you to just tell Xano what you want to build and it will find the packages that will work for you and it'll write all of the code. Before we jump into that, we're going to add an input here and I'm just going to call this text. And I'm going to tell the Lambda Assistant to translate the contents of my text input to Spanish. The Lambda Assistant will explain the code that it has written to you and then of course output the code below. We'll click use this code to add it to the editor and save our changes. And so now all we should have to do is run this and we'll say Xano is awesome and we'll see if that translation works. So there is our translated text. Of course, I don't speak Spanish, so I can't really vouch for the quality of this translation, but it looks pretty good to me. Now, before we continue, I want to talk a little bit about the do's and don'ts of using Lambda functions and NPM packages in Xano. The first is that you typically always want to make sure that you are calling specific versions of packages in your code. Now, it's not always the end of the world if you don't do this, but it does make sure that your Lambda functions are as efficient as possible when it comes to resource usage. It's also really important to make sure that you understand what the package does. And if you're not sure, you can just copy the package name. We can find it on the NPM website and we can browse all of the documentation for this specific package. The next thing is to make sure that you don't import packages that you don't need. And this again kind of goes back to efficiency and resource usage. You want to make sure that you're only importing packages that you're going to use in that function so it can remain as efficient as possible. Every package that you import will add time to the execution. You want to make sure that you don't hard code any sensitive information inside of your Lambda functions. This is really just good security practice. If you are going to use things like uh, sensitive keys or anything like that, you want to make sure that these live in your environment variables inside of your workspace, and then you call those variables as part of your functions. And finally, just like any other AI powered tool, make sure you're reviewing the code and testing it before you put it into production. If you're using the AI Lambda Assistant, you can continue to converse with it to troubleshoot any issues that might arise. You're typically not ever going to get perfect code first try from an AI. The last thing I want to walk you through is a kind of a real world example of how you might utilize a Lambda function inside of your Xano backend. So we have a table here that is full of fake generated sales data. And what we want to do is we want to generate a chart from that sales data. We just have a few functions here to do that for us. 
We have a query to get data from that table. We have our Lambda function here that I prepared earlier. And this takes that data, uses a library called chart.js to generate a chart of the sales of certain products. This does our top selling items and it generates HTML to actually display that chart for us. This third function here, this set header, just allows me to call this API in another tab and see the chart. And the end result looks like this. Now, something really important that I wanna highlight with this example is that we did not call an external API. All of this happened right on our Xano backend without any sort of external service. Now, this is important because not only did we save time by leveraging an NPM package instead of calling an external service, waiting for the data to come back and then rendering it, we also potentially are saving a decent amount of money by not having to leverage so many external third-party services. We can just run everything right inside of our Xano instance. So we can see our top five selling items by quantity, and this was all generated on our backend inside of Xano. Now, why would you generate this in Xano instead of doing it in your front end? That's a very valid question. There's a couple of reasons why. The first is depending on the front end that you're using, you may not get full control over the behavior or the look and feel of this chart. Maybe you are rendering this same chart in multiple places like a web app and a mobile app, and you want this to look and feel exactly the same in both places. Xano can just render it for you and you can feed that to both front ends. Maybe there is some advanced computation that needs to happen to generate the data that you're trying to show. The more of that that you put on the back end as opposed to the front end, typically the faster your application will be. You also have greater control over what data is exposed to the front end. And finally, you could use something like this to build an interactive chart on top of a legacy system that maybe just wouldn't support this at all. So what's better, having your back end do this for you or rebuilding your entire front end? So that's just a quick look at NPM package support inside of Xano. We know a lot of you have been asking for this for a long time, and we really hope it helps. If you have any questions, please let us know down in the comments below. You can also speak to us on the Xano community or reach out to us via support chat. And in general, we really just want to know how you're going to utilize this. So let us know that too. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.